and how are you? Well, I always got to, you know, you give me a mic and I'm dangerous. I hope... Uh-oh. What are you going to ask me? <laughs> I hope you're all enjoying yourselves at City and State, New York. We're trying to uh, give you something different. Now, Julie, besides asking you the obvious question, are you running for office again? No. No. Okay. So we got that out of the way. So you're now, as New York City Department of Consumer Affairs Commissioner. Yes. On the Bill de Blasio. You're having a lot of fun, obviously. The greatest job in the world. Yeah, right, with the greatest boss. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get on with this before I get into trouble. Now, the variety of things that you've done in, you know, in your background. Uh, you, were, you are a lawyer, mm -hmm. and you did practice in Washington, D.C., and you led a nonprofit, you've been in Wall Street, uh, well, actually, it's Wall Street Rising. And that yes, was after that was a not-for-profit, yes. So, as chairperson of Community Board 1, and you are now in this capacity, uh, which it's the first municipal consumer protection agency in the United States, so you always pick these jobs that are really very specific and very challenging to your type of personality. So after working in all these industries, and these capacities in which you've seen everybody at work and people with power. What is your perspective on working women, first of all, uh, today, and have women come uh, far enough in reaching equal professional status and opportunities, or is there more to do? Well, I think it's a great can, question. Can you at least listen to my guest, please? <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we have some silencio? Por favor. Thank you. At least you can listen to her if you didn't listen to my question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Well, thank you, Gerson. It's a great question. And obviously, I think we have a long way to go in terms of what women can accomplish. I mean, I mentioned earlier on that I'm very proud of the fact that in this administration, 53% of the commissioners, the deputy mayors are all women. And I think that's really a hallmark of how far we can go, but we can go so much further. With that said, we know that women are still paid generally 78 cents on the dollar. It's lower for women of color. So there are many things that have to happen. Um, certainly in my own career, when I started practicing law at a large law firm, it was very difficult. There were very few women partners. There were very few role models. There were, in the firm I was at in Washington, there were only several women partners. So it was hard at that time to find women role models. Now I think there's so many more, and that's something that we obviously need to do. Having an event like this, where we're specifically honoring the role that women are playing, whether it be in labor, in business, in the not-for-profit sector, or others, or media, is incredibly important. And you also asked about working women. I'm a mother of three. I have three young kids, so there's always that balancing role. It's not easy, and, but women all across the country are doing the exact same thing. I, look, I, I think that's a great answer. It's there. In terms of equality and, and in the current position that you're in, uh, serving as, as a female commissioner uh, for Mayor de Blasio and his administration, where there's so, so much diversity, do you feel that women uh, are reflected in general in, in, in the body politics? How are you impacted with that opportunity? Do you think like a woman or do you think in terms of need? I'm, I'm, because I, we always see this thing of, of women have, having to prove something when they really don't. They're, you know, they, they really excel at what they do. So. No, I think that that's a great question. And it's just a little hard to hear in the back, so I'm just gonna also say what Gerson said, just because I know in the back the acoustics are not great. Um, it, it is, can be very difficult. I mean, one of the stories to me that comes to mind, I ran to chair Community Board 1, which is in this district, in 2005. I had just given birth to twins. I had a toddler at home, and one of the comments that was made to me when I was running, which was made by a man, is, shouldn't you stay at home with your twins? And 
I, so the fact that there's still comments like that that are out there that can be prevalent, there is still so much farther that we have to go. But to the point of what's happening now and what we're doing specifically in this administration, if you look at something like paid sick leave, that's a law that our agency implements and enforces. It obviously affects both men and women, but I personally feel it has a unique impact on women. Why? Because we know in the society that women still bear a disproportionate responsibility for child care for elder care and the fact that now paid sick leave affects millions of New Yorkers who can now take time off to care for a sick child or an elderly parent. That is something, again, that is so incredibly important. Excuse me a minute. How many of you have children at home right now? Those that are on it tonight. How many of you have children at home? I, I think that that goes to the point that you just made, Julie. Uh, that what Julie Menard is saying is really significant because the role of mother doesn't stop being there and of, of, of the person responsible for the home, at least, if not, the, at least, I know in my home I'd be lost in terms of finances and everything else. Now, if you can, this has to do with all of you here, can, please. I'm trying to hear what it is that is so interesting that you can't give us a few minutes. I don't know about you, but when I invite someone to speak, I like to listen to their responses. I'm sorry. Let me know when I can speak, okay? All right, so many of, thank you so much. This has to do with the honorees tonight. Many of you, in the interviews that you did with city and state, it's interesting that women supporting women is important in the workplace, and I would say in every walk of life. Did you have any mentors, any women mentors, in the early stages of your career? And if so, how did he or she help you and how are you passing that on? Well, as I said, I started my career at a large law firm in D.C. where there were unfortunately very few women partners. So there was not a lot in terms of looking upwards in, in a trajectory. With that said, I do have a mentor and I have a mentor in my life. It's my mother. Uh, she's a Holocaust survivor. She went through very difficult times. She went through inhumane circumstances and to me the tenacity and leadership that she was able to show is something that I personally look up to and that motivates me each and every day. But what we're trying to do in terms of providing mentorship, I mean one thing that I'm really excited that the administration is doing that was recently announced is We New York where basically business service advice uh, counsel, mentorship is going to be provided for 5,000 women entrepreneurs across the city. This is so exciting. I'm a form, I used to own a small business. I owned a business that was a half a block away from here. I had 100 employees. I know how tough it is to own a business in New York City. And so the fact that we're providing this free business counsel is exactly the type of mentorship that we should be doing and that we are doing right now. Terrific. I appreciate the fact that you're speaking about your mother, which is, you know, Holocaust survivor by itself is, is, is a winner. Um, what piece of advice or pieces of advice or points would you offer young professional women in this room or outside that maybe some of your colleagues can also help with? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that I always tell this to my three kids is there is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. It's hard work. It's hard work that you have to do each and every day. And I think in my younger years, I always thought everything was a sprint. And it's not a sprint. It's, it's a long marathon. And so you have to take the long view towards things. But I, I think one of the biggest things that I try to instill, certainly in the young women who are working in our agency, is is there really is no substitute for hard work. You always want to be able to put in those hours and do your best because I think that your reputation is really one of the main things that you have in life. We asked this question of most of you. Thank you. Julie, you Thank got you. it there. You got crowd fan. <laughs> we asked this question of most of the honorees and I'm going to ask it of you. Uh-oh. And, and this you know well. 
what can government do at all levels to make everyday life better for women in the city, the state, in these United States of America? What can government do? Well, I'm going to speak as a working mother, because to me, that's one of the great challenges that working women face, whether it be daycare or other um, challenges that all of us face. But I, I'm going to, again, turn it back to what we've been able to do so far in this first year, whether it be paid sick leave, whether it be MWBEs, where the city has awarded over $600 million in MWBEs, contracts up 57% from last year, whether which is an amazing statistic, uh, whether it's universal pre-K. Again, if you're a working mother of a pre-K student, you want and deserve universal pre-K, and now you have it. These are things that government uh, is doing right now to make it better. There's still many more things we're going to be doing, but if I look back at what we've been able to do, municipal ID, the fact that for the 500,000 undocumented New Yorkers, they now have a municipal ID. And for any of you who, yes, that definitely bears applause. For any of you that saw the mayor's press conference on this, I just thought it was incredibly touching. The woman who spoke that she had trouble going into her child's school because she did not have documentation. It's those types of things that we want to be able to and indeed are addressing. So while I know that there's much more we can be doing and we will do, I feel like we should also take a moment to celebrate what we've been able to do so far. Excellent. Julie Menon, thank you so much. Thank you. Do you think, my last, this is my question. Do you think by electing more women to the presidency, to the <laughs> House of Representatives, to the Senate of the United States, to the state legislature, can women make the difference by legislating in the way that men have not been able to do? You know, it's so interesting because I used to serve on the board of an organization called the Women's Campaign Fund, completely not-for-profit organization based in D.C. that was really focused on electing women across the country. And all the research that we showed, again, showed the unique position that women leaders can play in terms of elected office. So it is incredibly important, and I think it's really important to mention young women in terms of public service, whether it's running for office, whether it's serving on a school board, whether it's chairing a community board. If all of us in this room can at least mentor young, one young woman, you can think about what kind of difference that can really make. Julie Menon, Commissioner, New York City Consumer Affairs. Muchas gracias and felicidades. Thank you so much, Julie.